welcome to Nelson Art of Physics, elaborating on everyday conversations that people shy away from. Now today we're going to continue the 48 laws of power, but before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that this is for absolutely anyone. The whole purpose of what I'm doing here on this podcast is for people to understand certain things about the way that people think, the way people react, why someone would do something harmful or why someone will react in such a negative way not knowing the true essence of where that thought process began and to begin you're gonna go straight into law six called court attention at all cost now for law six this is what the author has defined everything is judged by its appearance what is unseen counts for nothing. Never let yourself get lost in the crowd, then or buried in oblivion. Stand out. Be conspicuous at all costs. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. Court attention at all costs. Basically, you want to... With this law, what it's basically meaning or basically trying to get across to the crowd is is that you want to be the person that people don't forget you want to be that individual that when something has to do with whatever nature you you're a part of you're the first person that people think it could be for a number of things you could be the person who likes to party and you're the center of attention so people are going to call you whenever a party comes up or when people want to go out it could be when you're in the business setting and you and you stand out you give some valid points you give some phenomenal presentations and people are going to call you because you're the first person they're going to think about because you gave off such an image and you attracted so much attention that people are not going to forget about you so easily now What you want to consider here is what that actually means. Basically, you want to stand out. And when you stand out, what happens here is that you get to be different. And that works the other way around too. In order to stand out, you have to be different. So you also have to remind yourself, okay, If you want to serve in some capacity in whatever nature it is, in the business setting, in the relationship setting, whatever the case may be, you could be pursuing someone. You could be pursuing anyone that could be male or female. And next thing you know, you realize that that person has a lot of people that go after them. So what do you have to do? You have to stand out. You have to give them a reason why they should give you more attention than anyone else. Because what you're doing here is that you're gathering the attention of your surroundings. In order to achieve that, you have to be someone that is unforgettable. And in order to be unforgettable, you have to be the individual that either knows everything, the individual that's more skillful, the individual that has more knowledge, the individual that has a great and wonderful presentation physically, verbally mentally you have to take all of those things into account and once you take all of those things into account you're able to realize that you're able to stand out in a way where people are not going to forget you so easily now that also plays kind of in a very you know controversial way if you think about it so you want to surround your name with with the sensational and scandalous sometimes in order to stand out you may not have all the skill sets to have you stand out so your only route is for you to be sensational and scandalous and when you do that you create a controversial image and when you create a controversial image what's going to happen is that people are going to talk about you whether if it's negative or positive your name will remain in people's mouths 
And if that's your goal and that's your purpose, then you serve it well. We've seen it. We've seen that tactic played by, you know, our former president. I don't want to say any names, but you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. And, you know, the man, he was just straight up controversial. Everything he did was stuck in people's mouths. They, they spoke about him throughout the entire four years that he served. Everyone was talking about him, whether they liked them or disliked them. And that's what he brought to the table in terms of making sure that he's present in people's minds. Now, another way to court other people's attention is to be missed, you know, have this kind of like mystery to you. Like people don't know too much about you, but people know just enough. But that just enough isn't enough. People want to get to know you even more, but you don't give them those answers. You keep everything a secret. Everything is a mystery. And that alone is going to attract a certain type of crowd, a certain kind of people. And if that's your goal to attract those kind of individuals, then, you know, you're going to succeed in what you're, you're seeking. But you also have to understand what is it that you want. Because when you when you want something specifically, you have to give it your all. You're going to court the attention at all costs, like the title of the law. Now, the reversal to this. In the beginning of your rise to the top, you must attract attention at all costs. But as you rise higher, you must constantly adapt. Never wear the public out with the same tactic. An air of mystery works wonders for those who need to develop an aura of power and get themselves noticed but it must be measured and under control. Do not let your air of mystery be slowly transformed into a reputation of deceit. The mystery you create must seem a game, playful and unthreatening. Recognize when it goes too far and pull back, meaning make sure that whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to achieve, make sure you adapt accordingly. And whatever it is you want to attract, Make sure that you're not deceitful in that, you know, in that process. Because what happens is that when things go too far, people are just not going to want to be around you. They're not going to consider you. And that's not going to be the, the end goal to what you're seeking. So just be aware and move accordingly. Now, the following law. Get others to do the work for you, but always take the credit. Man, this right here is something people are not going to like, but let's get to it. Use the wisdom, knowledge, and legwork of other people to further your own cause. Not only will such assistance save, your, save you valuable time and energy, it will give you a godlike aura of efficiency and speed. In the end, your helpers will be forgotten and you will be remembered. Never do yourself what others can do for you. In other words, outsourcing and not giving credit to whatever it is you're outsourcing. So if you if you have something you want to achieve, a goal in mind, and you don't have all the necessary skill sets or the time, because sometimes you may have all the skill sets, but just not the time, and you need to be efficient, you're going to outsource. And when you outsource, the best thing to do and, you know, in today's society is give credit where it's due. But some people, when they, when they trying to climb that ladder to the top, they, they'll outsource and they just will not, will not give anyone the necessary credit. And once they outsource and achieve what they have to achieve, they'll cut that middleman out. And that middle, that middle man will always be forgotten. Remember, the middle man always gets forgotten, no matter what. The messenger always gets forgotten, never rem remember, remembered, no matter what. You have, to, you have to keep that in mind. And how does that look like? Okay, for example, you are event planning for whatever the case may be. 
you, you have this event you have in mind so you're gonna outsource you're gonna outsource lighting you're gonna outsource sound you're gonna outsource the music you're gonna outsource you know the decorations you're gonna outsource everything from a to z and you start putting together this game plan and in this game plan your ultimate end goal is success but some, somewhere in that success that you wish to achieve you forget to give credit to where it's due and sometimes you can get away with it you know why you can get away with it sometimes because unfortunately you know you're paying people and they're gonna take that money and forget about what happened so that I can they can utilize those finances for whatever the case it may be they want it for I'm gonna give you a different example that happens a lot in the music industry you have a music executive or you have an artist of high caliber or it could even be a producer of high caliber and these individuals will, will outsource certain bodies of work and when they find that body of work that meets their needs they'll go up to the individual and they'll analyze the individual they'll see how the individual moves speak looks and they'll start putting a price tag on that individual and you know what they do they give them an offer they cannot refuse they'll pay them top dollar but why because there will be an agreement under that and what will be that agreement for some you know for example okay you have this body of work i want to pay you more than what you're asking for under this condition you will not be credited i will take full ownership of this body of work and i'll be taking anything that comes along from, with it and my name will be attached to it only and if the individual you know want to analyze they look at the individual and they, you know they put a price tag on the individual the individual might need those finances and the individual may agree there's been times where there are there's music that goes platinum and gets nominated for grammys and wins grammys and gets all these awards but some of that body of work was bought out in the full for a fraction of the price of the overall net that they received for that body of work and the true artist and the true creative behind that body of work only received that small fraction of a price of what they could have could have received sometimes finances put yourself put you in a situation that can allow you to achieve more and gain more but in the moment you have to figure it out and that's you know unfortunately it happens every day it happens sometimes we see and we keep our mouths shut but it is what it is what it is at the end of the day they be versatile to this. There are times when taking the credit for work that others have done is not the wise course. If your power is not firmly enough established, you will seem to be pushing people out of the limelight. To be a brilliant exploiter of talent, your position must be unshakable or you will be accused of deception. Be sure you know when letting other people share the credit serves your purpose. It is especially important to not be greedy when you have a master above you. Now, if you're outsourcing, you have a leader above you. And the people you're outsourcing have access to your leader. Your power is now being shaken in a way that's not going to be most suitable and beneficial to you. You also want to be careful when you, when you take credit for other people's work because you don't know who that person knows what connections they have who they are connected to and they have the ability to tarnish your name and ruin your reputation 
And as we spoke in earlier laws, your, your reputation is everything. So if you're going to take credit for something that you did not do or work for, make sure you take it from someone who will not ruin your reputation, who will not burn bridges for you, and who will not harm you on your journey to more success. Now, let's move forward. Law number eight. Make other people come to you. Use bait if necessary. When you force the other person to act, you are the one in control. It is always better to make your opponent come to you, abandoning, abandoning his own plans in the process. Lure him with fabulous gains, then attack. You hold the cards. Now, let's sit down and analyze this. Let's break it up because because there's like two parts to this law. The part, the first part is make other people come to you. Forcing other people to act on your behalf. On your command. What, how does that look like? Basically, if you're, if you're in demand, if you have something that people want or you have something that people need even better. Now, you control how that person moves. It's a game of chess. And you want to make sure that you come up. You come, you're the last person. You come on top that nobody is able to dictate your moves the other way around. You want to be able to let people know, okay, this is what you want. You come here. This is what you need. You come to me. You need this. You come see me. You know why? Because it gives you power. It gives you control. And when you have control, you're able to maneuver and act accordingly. And using bait, could, if necessary, it's, it's horrible, but it could be, okay, I have this for that. Now, how does that look like? All right. You want this? You want something important, something that I have, something valuable? Now, you're going to do this for me. You're going to do that for me. And if you're able to achieve that, we have a deal. Now, if it's something that the other party wants and needs, guess what? They're going to do it. It's going to happen. So how does that look like? All right. I have a I have a business. For example, you know, if I have a business where you know, I'm selling certain goods. But now, guess what? I'm the only one who has those goods. So now what you have is high in demand. In a way you're in your monopoly. Even even if it's just for a small fraction of time. At the moment, you're a monopoly. You control who gets those goods, how they get those goods, and what they have to do to get those goods. And people are going to do what they have to do to achieve their goal. But as they achieve their goal, you get the final say-so. That's how that looks like, in a way. And then once they get close, get, guess what? If you want to get rid of them people, if you want to get rid of your competition, that's all. You might have goods, you hijack the prices, your competition comes. I want to wholesale from you. Okay, guess what? It's at this price. Obviously, you're the one who has the cheaper price. You get to put a sale price on your goods. Your competition has the same goods. But the clientele, they're going to come to you instead. Why? Because you have the better prices. You set the tone. And that's how that looks like. Now the reversal. Although it is generally the wiser policy to make others exhaust themselves chasing you, there are opposite cases where striking suddenly and aggressively at the enemy so demoralizes him that his energies sink 
Instead of making others come to you, you go to them. Force the issue. Take the lead. Fast attack can be an awesome weapon for it forces the other person to react without the time to think or plan. With no time to think, people make errors of judgment and are thrown on a defensive. This tactic is the up upverse of waiting and baiting, but it serves the same function. You make your enemy respond on your terms. It's basically the same thing. It's the same concept, but moving differently. Now, you prepare yourself, you have everything in sight, and you know something, you know, people can't get these goods, so you start going to other, other places. I got these goods. This is my price. Today's price is not yesterday's price. And let's see if you want to do business. Because in order for you to make sales to your clientele, and do you have a functioning business, you're going to have to wholesale and get these goods from me. Now, this is the price point. Do you want to do business? Yes or no? Simple as that. You go to people. You destroy them. And there's different many ways to destroy them. And you get rid of your competition. That's all you got to do. And you come on top. Now, moving forward. Win through your actions, never through argument. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. Any momentary triumph you think you have gained through argument is really a pyrrhic victory. The resentment and ill will you stir up is stronger and lasts longer than any momentary change of opinion. It is much more powerful to get others to agree with you through your actions without saying a word. Demonstrate, do not explicate. Winning through your actions, never through arguments. I want to give several examples from this. The first one is going to be in a relationship setting. You have a friend or a significant other, and you guys have an exchange of small words that can lead to a serious argument. And you realize something that you don't have to argue with that individual because you have the power to prove yourself in a way that you don't have to vocalize or whatever it is for you to win in this back and forth. There's no need for a back and forth. You know what you do? You go out there and you prove your actions speak more than your words any day. You know, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter how people look at you. People can't do anything when the actions are proven. At the end of the day, results do not lie. They are facts. Once you have results based on your actions, it is no longer an opinion. It is a fact. So if you're able to react with your actions and not have to argue not one word, you're going to win. You're going to come on top. Your partner can say anything, anything to you. Simple as that. You know, it could be small things. Oh, you know, well, this means that. And you say, no, it doesn't mean that. You could either choose to argue with that person back and forth, or you go online, search it up, get a number of articles, source your facts, and show it to that person here. This is X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, and X, Y, and Z. Source from here. What do you have to say now? You don't have to argue with the person. You shut them up. Winning through your actions, never through argument. In a business setting. If you're in sales, beautiful. Okay. People say, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. This person's the best. Your leader has favoritism. Oh, this person's the best. But you know damn well you're the absolute best. You know what you do? You say nothing. And you take the results. Your results. 
you prove yourself by reacting. And when you have those results on paper, guess what? Numbers do not lie. Your leader could have favoritism and lie. Your surroundings could have favoritism and lie. People could lie on themselves. But when those numbers are on paper, and those numbers are proven, those are facts now. It's no longer an opinion. So if you have the best numbers, the best feedback, the most output, guess what? You're going to come on top. Nobody, absolutely anyone can say anything to you because your actions will always prove more than anything else. The reversal to this. Verbal argument has one vital use in the realm of power. To distract and cover your tracks when you are practicing deception or are caught in a lie, in such cases, it is to your advantage to argue with all the conviction you can muster. Draw the other person into an argument to distract them from your deceptive move. When caught in a lie, the more emotional and certain you appear, the less likely it seems that you are lying. Now, basically arguments can be used to deceive. And that's why you don't argue. Sometimes if you feel like you're able to get deceived by someone who's arguing, don't argue. No, no argue. You just prove. You give results. You show them what it is. No room for argument. No room for opinions. No room for debate. Only leave room for facts. You know, and if you have to lie yourself way through, then you do the arguing. What better way to go about it? You tr you're the one who's trying to finesse. You're the one who's trying to, ar you know, lie. You're the one who's trying to prove a point that's not true. So guess what? You win in an argument where you sound certain about what you're saying. Just keep that in mind and be careful. Law number 10, infection. Avoid the unhappy and unlucky. People are not going to like this one. Listen, you can die from someone else's misery. Emotional states are as infectious as diseases. You may feel you are helping the drowning man, but you are only precipit precipit pre precipitating. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but you could read it. You are precipitating your own disaster. The unfortunate sometimes draw misfortune on themselves. They will also draw it on you. Associate with the happy and fortunate instead. Instead, Avoid miserable people. Avoid unhappy people. Avoid people that have the worst luck. You know why? Because you will begin getting sucked into their misery, into that infection of unhappiness, all of a sudden unluckiness. You don't need that in your life. You know what you need? You need motivation. You need healthy leadership. You need healthy surroundings. You need a balanced environment. And you do not have any room in this world to be dealing with miserable people. Do not make yourself miserable dealing with miserable people. That's the result. Trying to help the miserable can lead you into becoming miserable. That's the last thing you need for yourself. If someone is unhappy constantly, they're always complaining constantly. They are negative. Con and when I say negative, I mean negative in an envious and hateful way. Because you could be negative in a positive way because you're being protective about you know, what it is that's going on. But I'm, I'm talking about a certain type of negativity that is just envious and hateful. You stay away from those kind of people. Those kind of people are the worst kind of people to have around. You have no room for that in a relationship setting. You have no room for that when you're trying to seek new people. You, tr you have no room for that when looking for jobs. You have no room for that when looking for business partners. You have no room for that in a high 
valued business environment, period. What you need is positivity. What you need is great energy. What you need is good people, trustworthy people, uplifting people, people with purpose, people who feel like they have a purpose. You know why? Because miserable people, a lot of the time, feel like they have no purpose. Unhappy people have struggle trying to find purpose. But you want to surround yourself with people who feel and are positive about the purpose they have in this life, about the purpose of what they're doing in an everyday pay basis, about their purpose and just a work-life balance. Those are, those are the kind of people you want to have around you. Those are the kind of people you actually want to learn from. Those are the kind of people that is healthy to have around your family. You do not want anyone miserable around your kids. Does that make any sense? That does not make any sense. You want your kids to be looking at miserable people and how they move, how they act, how they react. That's not healthy for them. Not at all. So if you wouldn't have those people around your kids, why would you have them around yourself? Why would you allow your significant other to be around people like that? Never. If my significant other had friends that were miserable all the time, I would convince my significant other to get rid of that person as a friend. I will never recommend being around people who just are full of hate, envy, feel unhappy, always miserable, have unlucky things going on. You know why? Because their mentality is not okay with trying to grow and be better. Instead of becoming better, they become bitter. We have no time for that. We have no room for that. We have no emotional space to be dealing with that. We as human beings have enough problems in our, in our lives. We all have problems. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're wealthy, whether you're in debt. Listen, we all have problems of all sorts. It may be problems on different scales, problems that you go through that the next person may never go through in their lives, but guess what? You're going through them. And because you have enough problems in your life, in your own personal life, you have no room to be dealing with the miserable, unhappy, unlucky. No, you're just setting yourself for failure doing that. That's an, they, they have an infection. That's an infection dealing with those kind of people. And they have to fix themselves before they come correct to you. And if they don't fix themselves, they have no reason being part of your life. Now, the reversal to this is very interesting because guess what? This law admits of no reversal. Its application is universal. There's nothing to be gained by associating with those who infect you with their misery. There is only power and good fortune to be obtained by associating with the fortunate. Ignore this law at your peril. You know, it's basically what I said. And I hope you guys enjoy these five laws that I spoke today about. Laws five through, well, well laws, through, laws six through 10. I'm going to put the minute and second marker of each law where they begin in case you just want to listen to a specific law. You know, my goal here is to make your lives easier. My goal here is for you guys to understand how people think. And my goal here is to give you clarity on why people move a certain way. And with that knowledge, you're able to you're able to move accordingly. Now, thank you for your time. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and we'll tune in for next week. Thank you. Have a good one.